Welcome back ladies and gents to this installment of Next Level Rides. In today's episode we're going to be continuing on an older project that has been sitting around for a few months now. You may be able to tell what this is but of course it's the uh, the blue E90 that has sat here for some time. It used to have an N55 engine and now it's currently running on hopes and dreams but less hopes less dreams it just doesn't run. Initially we were going to do a bit of a hybrid thing with the old cylinder head and trying to do like an N54 hybrid, but it wasn't really worth the headache and the owner decided to go a different route. We're gonna change it up a hair here. Um, the previous engine, if you recall, it had an injector on cylinder six that a shop had snapped off in the cylinder head. We could have taken it to a machine shop or tried a bit harder to press it out. It wasn't really worth it. So we kind of ditched that idea. The valves needed to be lapped. They are kind of leaking a little bit. Would have been fine, but it wasn't worth it. So we decided to sell that one and source lower-ish mileage engine from uh, Wrecker. Now over here, Ozzy is hey. wrenching away. <laughs> Where is he? There he is. Here. He's wrenching away on the N55. And what we've got here is a lower mileage engine. So it has roughly 200,000 kilometers. It's a fully built Gypsy 5.4 spec. That's gonna put down good power. I don't know exactly what it's gonna make for power. I think reliability will be the biggest thing and response and so forth. Ozzy, what do you wanna make? Uh, I don't know, we'll see. I'll just keep it secret, you know? Somewhere between four and 427, and yeah. Sure, 427, that's what we're aiming <laughs> for is 427. We did a few things off screen. Now for here, we ended up doing the valve cover. Didn't need to bore you with that. We did the oil pan, we checked, made sure that it was nice and healthy. We already did the walnut blast. There's no point in showing you how to do all that. You've seen me do it multiple times before. Other than the basic service stuff, the uh, guy that was selling it, we ended up getting it from Summerland in the Okanagan. It was in pretty good shape. He ended up pulling the filter, he cut it apart inspected it, did a compression test, and it passed with flying colors. That's gonna be very good in the sense that we're likely not gonna have any issues. Oil pan was clean, and now it's just uh, clean up, reseal, and get it ready for more power. We're gonna be chucking a turbo on. It's of course gonna be mated to an eight speed with the uh, CAN TCU or CAN Formans controller, and it should be okay. It's gonna move pretty good, and we'll see what it puts down for power. You can see on the ground there, the tired old 200,000 mile uh, turbo is gonna be replaced with this big boy. The turbo on the bench here is from Turbo Parts Canada. It would be essentially the equivalent of about approximately a 2.5 turbo. So if you're thinking pure stage two, my understanding is the wheels are a little bit bigger than a pure stage two. So it'll in turn give us a little bit more power, maybe, because we need all the help that we can up here in Canada in the altitude that we got to deal with. So what we're going to do is take the coolant feed here. We're going to clean it up really nice and repurpose it for the new upgraded turbo. No, sorry, the oil drain. The oil feed is still on the factory turbo that we need to repurpose again. Same for the coolant return. Give it a clean, change the O-rings, pop them in. You're good to go.
right, ladies and gents, probably all gents, maybe. Give you a bit of a recap on the engine. We ended up putting the heat cover on or whatever it's called, the pressure converter, the turbos on, the inlets on. This is all nice bolted torqued. We're gonna be starting at the front of the engine earlier today. We did the oil filter housing. This is off an N54 and the intake manifold. So we'll make sure that all the connectors are connected. And just in behind me is this hot, fiery dumpster of a mess. We ended up pushing this vehicle in. The rear tire was flat from, uh, but that was a previous incident. He bought the wheels like that and uh, just wanted some rollers, not so rollers, three out of four rolled to uh, store the vehicle on while I was sitting on the side of my garage. In the back there, I don't know if we can see the Elvin child himself, but I'm gonna show you what Taylor's working on right now and uh, give you a little bit of an update. As I walk to the back of the automobile. Taylor, Hola. what are we doing? What are you uh, doing? Come here, oh. we'll get close. Hold on, no, no, hold on. I'll give him this microphone. Ow. So because this transmission originally came out of an E chassis, so a 2012 X5, I believe, couple different steps that you need to take so you need to clone it to make it think it's an F series for the CAN TCU to work for it or work with it so we've already wired the CAN TCU into the car and now we have this hillbilly setup going on here because I am too lazy to lift the transmission out of the trunk and can is it because you're too lazy or is shut up feeble twig bodied there's the transmission <sighs> that transfer case so I can interrupt Taylor and annoy him a bit more this is off the E70. No, 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 oh, you, you, can, you can hold it, that's it. We're gonna replace it with the factory six speed one. But for this monstrosity, we are uh, just programming the transmission itself, as you mentioned. Yeah, so Ken's basically just remoting in because I don't know how to use any of this yet, and neither does Tony. So it's easier just to let whoa, him- Whoa, 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 I know everything. No, he doesn't. That's still up here. Shut up. No, he doesn't. Anyways, continue. So we're letting Ken just kind of remote in and then uh, I can sit here and watch while he does it and that way learn at the same time. So for future doing this, I don't need his help. Kind of frees up a little bit more of his time and we're not waiting on anybody, which is a double bonus. But it allows you to use each chassis uh, eight HPs as well instead of just out of an F chassis. I need to reinstall my microphone. Hold, hold on. Perfect. So the N55 will hopefully be in this lump by end of day, hopefully. Um, again, the eight speed, we're gonna be mating to the back of it. We have the oil cooler and everything to deal with. We're gonna drop the subframe. If you've watched the previous episode, I built this bit of a contraption to lower the subframe with the, the hubs and everything onto it. We're gonna wiggle the engine into the axles because the axle nuts didn't want to come out. And at that point, oil cooler, flex plate, torque converter, transmission, and hopefully it goes in. Well, it'll go in. I just don't know if we're going to need to use a hammer or not, or three or whatever, but it'll go in. So stay tuned.
All right, so as you saw, we got the motor into the uh, home. So Bunny went home to roost, or I think it's chickens went home. Anyways, whatever, I'm a little bit delusional. It's uh, a little bit spicy out today, plus 26, and I don't do too well with heat. Point it towards the gentleman working on the vehicle here. Near the back, Ozzy is there somewhere, Taylor's underneath. For the engine itself, what we ended up doing is the subframe bolts so you have the 18 mil so there's one here one about here and one there ish we lowered the six of those bolts the entire subframe drops down the easiest way is to put the engine and transmission onto the subframe and then you're going to lift it up into the engine bay the one thing that we could have done that would have made life a little bit easier is leave the ac and the power steering off so that we had a little bit more room up and through here but it really doesn't look all that bad and uh, we connected the brakes on both sides, struts on top with the three 13 mil nuts. And we still have quite a bit left to do. So we're gonna put the camera down and wrench away. Now it's relatively easy stuff. Uh, steering shaft was a little bit tricky. We had to tip the motor down just a hair to get the uh, spline and the keyway on proper, but this is all good. We're just gonna do a nut and bolt check and start plugging away at the hoses. Look at that. It actually looks like a car again. It's got its front bumper, it's got its eyeballs in, and uh, the rest of the wiring is relatively where it needs to be. I'm gonna give you guys a quick rundown as to what we finished, and uh, yeah, I think it's pretty close to the time. So other than the obvious, the entire front end is on. Holy crap, the actual headlights work. Actually, those look, those look pretty good. We have his, Scoops color, all that stuff, ignore that. It's uh, upside down. We installed the meth line. We have the intake. This one's gonna stay a little bit loose. In the interim, what we did is we disconnected the injectors so that we could prime the oiling system. The oil filter housing, what we ended up doing is we poured probably a half liter in through here so that the oil pump can have a little bit of oil because this hasn't been running some time. We did install the oil cooler. This is an N54 unit with the factory lines that are going down to the cooler there. And from the wheel well, we ended up repurposing off of Zach's E90 is the factory ducting. So you can see just inside there, that's where the oil cooler fins are. A Little bit of OEM-ish. We just have the plastic push tabs here. So we cut it out with a Dremel. We made sure that it fit. We should be good to go there. Everything on the brake side is completed on both sides. All of the ducting in between either side. We have, a, I believe it's a STET seven and a half inch stepped intercooler. So S-T-E-T-T, -T -T, I think. Yeah, we're gonna go with it. We finished the wiring up and over here. This is just 
This is relatively temporary for the JB4. That's for the FSB itself. This power wire, we're going to have to figure something out. It was pushed under a fuse. Maybe I'll get Ozzy to do that. Other than that, the engine bay is finished and it's the moment of truth, I think. Now, plan of attack, we're going to, of course, we, we filled fluids. It, is, it does have all the coolant in it. It has power steering, it has engine oil. We didn't touch anything with the brakes. What we're gonna do is we're going to crank it with the injectors unplugged. BMW says three sets of 10 seconds each, 30 seconds to let the starter cool down. We're gonna do that for about, BMW says three, I'll say four, five kind of thing. We're gonna wait until the motor has oil pressure and Generally, you'll see with these cooler lines, they'll start to expand when it has enough pressure. We'll see what it does. Hopefully no, no knock knock jokes. We don't want any Subaru Mojo bad juju here. So we'll see. Okay. Ready? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Is there a way you can read uh, oil pressure? Oil pressure, actual value? Sure. Ooh, we have one PSI. Okay. Go again? Yeah. Yeah. Four PSI. Okay, we're gonna do that one more time. Now watch the hose, watch. Okay. One more. Okay. See, now look how hard it is. Perfect, it's the moment of truth. I'm just nervously washing my hands because I always try to uh, delay the inevitable. Now, pray to whoever we need to pray to. Ozzy, you ready? Oh yeah, oh yeah. Good. Start your engine. Shut check, off? Check engine light, I shut it off. What's the check engine light? Well, probably misfire. It has to burp all the air yeah, bubbles out of the fuel yeah. lines and... Yeah, but it was, you heard it smooth? Go again? Well, ask, ask Oz, are you ready? My phone or? Yeah. Okay, okay, then go for it. Steer, steer in. Good to actually hear that there's no uh, knock knock jokes. I was gonna do one of these to Ozzy, <laughs> but uh, he got away scot free this time. We're gonna get in touch with Ken from Ken TCU. We're gonna get it flashed, law unlocked, whatever Ken does. He does that witchcraft electrical stuff. And when it's all buttoned up, we're gonna take it for a spin, see how it does. It's been a couple of days since the last clip where I said we were going to program the diff or run in code the diff, do our final once over and give it a drive. So that didn't work out as well as we would have hoped. As you can see behind me, the vehicle itself is complete. The vehicle is sitting on its wheels, but we ran into issues. To give you a brief history of the vehicle, it had an issue prior. It would drive for very short moments and it would kind of stall and shut off and then it wouldn't restart. You'd have to let it cool down and then eventually it'd be okay for a little bit. Anyways, it was having some problem. 
So it was throwing Valtronic codes. We kind of figured since his uh, Valtronic motor was ticking that it was related to the motor. We took it to a certain shop that again will stay unnamed. They diagnosed it as a Valtronic harness. Nope. Valtronic motor. Nope. Uh, eccentric shaft. Nope. And uh, snapped the tip of the injector off in cylinder six. Now where this ends up becoming my issue after changing all of this, is that we started the vehicle, we ended up running it, we were going to fill the transmission in, and as we filled the transmission, it randomly stalled. I'm like, okay, that's weird. So try to restart it, it was cranking, and I heard the fuel pump is kind of acting up, it was cycling, like the PWM was constantly like a strange, like it lost signal to the DME or CAS or something, which, hold on, you can pause the video and go get your popcorn because it's uh, gonna be an interesting little bit of information, but uh, it stalled. We're like, that's weird. So we started looking over everything and everything seemed to be relatively okay and uh, let it cool down a bit and it started without any issue. So we tried to fill the transmission again and it randomly revved a bit, shut off, and every time it just wouldn't restart, which was weird. From there, we did eventually get to uh, finish filling the transmission. So that was okay. It went in gear. It goes through the gears, all of that's fine, but it kept intermittently throwing these weird codes and issues. And uh, eventually we started to diagnose, it was terminal 50 and Valvetronic problems and ignition, whatever, it, it, it threw all the codes possible. But while it had this issue, we wouldn't be able to check the codes. And that was the key. So for whatever reason, it was heat dependent that something was shutting off the power to the CAS and the DME so we started to dig a bit. We checked all the connections, we changed the harnesses, we changed all the relays, we checked, changed the EKPM, we did all of the diagnosing. Read that maybe it was a bad ground, so the factory ground, even though it's a braided line, we took off, we cleaned all of the surfaces, we bolted it back and it was still a problem. We even tried to give it extra grounds because the oil filter housing was uh, connected to the block. So we used some jumper cables to give it a bit of a ground. So we connected them to the filter housing to think maybe it was a grounding issue. Nope. So the only thing that we've determined now, I bet you if I, if I go to try and start it now because it's sad overnight, it'll start no issue and it'll run until something gets a little bit warm, which is weird. What we've determined is that it has to be either a CAS module, which is I believe to the left of the steering wheel and maybe down a bit on these or the DME. Yeah. If you guys have experienced something like this, let us know. It, it's obviously not drivable, but everything we did is Mint. Ozzy's a little bit upset, but there's only so much that we can do. We'll uh, continue to diagnose and see if we can determine what's exactly going on. But again, if you, if any of you have experienced this, just let us know in the comments because we're we're kind of stumped. Again, as soon as it ends up having this issue, you lose connection to the DME and the CAS. So the only thing we can think of, and again, changing relays and. That was all fine, but yeah, nothing. So it must be an internal fault with the CAS or the DME. I guess to, to recap all of the chat about it is I'm, I'm done with this car. Like we're over 70 hours into this and uh, I definitely have to uh, focus on my own stuff and uh, make sure the one series gets a little bit of attention before our road trip. And today it's a bit rainy. We're gonna kick this one outside and Maybe to pull, pull the CAS and see if we can get one cloned. If and when we end up figuring it out, whatever is going on with this, I don't know if we need an exorcist or whomever we need to pray to to figure it out. When we figure it out, we'll be sure to give you guys an update. We'll give you all of the, the revs and the drive-bys and we'll do another review on it. I'm not giving up on it. It's just a matter of, we wanted to end the video, but explain to you guys why you didn't get any driving footage. That's it. I'm gonna go try and rest up. That's all for today. Feel free to like and subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next one. You should be a good car, but you're bad. You're on timeout. You think about what you did. Holy sh! This is good. And I got it from the dollar store. Oh, this is awesome. Now if I could only see around my fat hands. La 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 la. Oh, f it's recording that.
go sit on that. <laughs> there you are, Anatoly. Can I clean here? <laughs> Easy. All the young boys can. Easy! <laughs>